Welcome to Hong Kong. Um, we said it last season, but uh, we'll say it again. Mexico seems to be the place where you, Audi, get back on track. Uh, how do you feel coming here to Hong Kong after that incredible win? Yeah, it was a fantastic race in Mexico, generally. Obviously, it was made better by the fact we won. But I think overall, it was a really exciting race all the way through. And uh, that bodes well for us in terms of performance, because clearly uh, we've got pace out of the car. Uh, we showed that in Santiago and then in Mexico. Coming here to Hong Kong, I think we know here is a circuit that we can be quick on as well. And uh, we've seen the checkered flag in Hong Kong, but just not necessarily kept the trophy. And so from that point of view, there's a wee bit of a score to settle. And I think especially for Daniel. And uh, that's one of the things that we come here with in the back of our mind. But I would say it's not necessarily our priority. Or the thing that's sitting there, it's uh, with the momentum that we come out of Mexico with. Is this the first circuit of this style this season, would you say? Is Hong Kong different to anything we've been so far? Yeah, every circuit's been very different uh, so far in the season. You know, Riyadh was a new type of track. Then we went to something which is a bit more typical for motorsport in Marrakesh. Uh, Santiago was different to what we expected. And uh, then Mexico, but also the requirements from the car and the tyre and what was under stress and limit. This is the slowest uh, average speed circuit of the calendar. It's also going to be the shortest race of the calendar in terms of kilometres. Uh, you've got the slowest speed corner in the calendar. And so it is a very much a very different type of place than Mexico. And uh, that's something that I think we all have to adapt to with our cars. I think it'll suit some people more than others. I think it suits some drivers more than others. And uh, so you'll probably see a bit of a shake up of the grid just because of that. Uh, just hopefully we're at the right end of it. And uh, Formula E celebrates its 50th EPRI this weekend. You've been involved for a good couple of years. I thought you were going to say something about being 50. Uh, Are you 50? No. Okay. Um, what, what do you make of how the series has progressed and, uh, and the, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? 21. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, how do, what do you make of the series reaching 50 races and how it's progressed? And, uh, because presumably you were aware of it at the very first race, because Audi were part of the apt team for season one Beijing. Yeah, obviously very aware of it uh, because also Lucas de Grassi was in that first race and he's one, I think, of five drivers that's competed in every race so far. Uh, along with Daniel Apt. In fact, I think it's the only driver pairing that has been consistent in the calendar from Beijing in season one, the first race, now through to the 50th race. And so we've had a, a toe in the water all the way through. Uh, it's been quite, uh, I would say, a, <laughs> a mesmerizing event in terms of the way that it's progressed because I don't think there's many people in this room uh, that were in Beijing, and I don't think there's many people in the room today that actually thought we would get to 50 races as a championship. But clearly it has, it's very competitive, uh, it's a strong championship, and it's really making its mark in its DNA, and that, I think, is proven by the fact of the, the names of the manufacturers, the teams, the drivers that are all involved, and the fact that the media centres pretty much full at every race now. So I'm very pleased and proud that uh, we're here and uh, be very nice to take home a trophy that says the 50th race winner on it Absolutely. because we did win the first race. Yeah, well, best of luck for the weekend. Uh, one man who was here in season one Beijing 2014 and every race yeah. so then on is Mark Preston. How do you see the championship has evolved since that, that first race in Beijing? Yeah, it's really hard to describe how crazy everybody thought we were in, in season one. And I think Alejandro has probably said that a few times that he didn't think we'd maybe survive the whole time. Um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. We had a lot of crazy things happen in the first race. Cars stopping on track, rebooting software, all sorts of weird things in the, in the first few races. And it's gone from strength to strength. And as Alan said, it's amazing the difference now. So full, so many people in the, in the championship. Um, it's amazing to watch. And, Incredible and hard to explain how, yeah, how nobody thought it would happen at the beginning. In the fifth race of this season, after the first couple of races, you had the pace, but not necessarily the points. How concerned are you that you still don't necessarily have the points that you would have wanted? Yeah, we've had a few things go wrong in the first races, and well, we certainly had the pace there. Um, this new qualifying format is not quite working out to our, the way we do, would have liked. Uh, 
And this weekend, I don't think it's going to be much different. I hear that there was a big downpour while we were, in a, we were all in a meeting just about 10 minutes ago. So qualifying could be quite topsy-turvy. I'm not sure how that'll turn out. So even in this race, with uh, us being in Group 2 this time, I'm not sure we're going to be able to take advantage of the, the Group 2 uh, extra pace that we've seen at some of, the, some of the races. So we'll just have to try and put it all together and hope that the rain doesn't cause too much trouble. It'll cause excitement for the TV, I'm sure, though. Yeah, I don't mind. Um, <laughs> With attack mode being introduced this year in the new race format, how do you feel that has lended itself to the racing? I mean, that was obviously a big part of the exciting finish we saw in Mexico as well. Yes, I suppose, um, was attack mode really the reason in? No, that was more the safety car, I suppose, and the recalculation yeah, of... But also, of, the re uh, but it's uh, not an X amount of laps, is it? You know, yeah, the, no, the, the time, time. time factor is certainly a, a big thing, and um, it worked for us it, it, to a certain degree in um, Riyadh, um, but then we had some other problems. Um, but yeah, last race I think it was more to do with the time and, and the full course yellow, etc. And the recalculation that caused some excitement. Um, but yeah, the, certainly the, the time and the attack mode and all the elements that have been introduced have caused lots of uh, changes in the grid, I think. Okay, great. Best of luck for the weekend. Uh, turning now to James Barkley, team director of uh, Panasonic Jaguar Racing. Welcome to round five. Uh, firstly, Nelson Piquet's crash in um, Mexico was quite startling. How was he after that? And, you know, is everything all right now? Yeah, no, absolutely. He was, uh, he was fine. Um, he was actually on the radio straight away. He was ready to get out. But obviously the safety procedure uh, means you have to stay in the car to be checked. But yeah, he was absolutely fine. Um, I think the incident happened incredibly quickly. So I was keen to kind of get back and see how it had unfolded from, uh, from the kind of camera point of view. Um, but no, absolutely fine uh, car. Car obviously uh, didn't create any issues there. So from his point of view, yeah, obviously focused straight away. We rebuilt the car. We had to change the chassis, and we were out testing the following day. And Nelson had no, no issues. So, yeah, I think very much just looking forward to getting back in the car and getting back out there on Sunday. And how do you rate your season so far? I think for us, we've shown we have good race pace. Um, Mark explained the difficulties with qualifying this season. Um, we've had some, some misfortune. We haven't capitalized in, in, in maybe in a few, few points. Um, you know, Mitch having the red flag and not, not being able to kind of get his, his qualifying lap in, in, in Riyadh was, it was a challenge, but he raced through to fourth. And what we've seen, generally speaking, is we, we haven't quite optimized qualifying for one reason or another, either our own or conditions haven't allowed us to in the case of the red flag in Riyadh. But every race we've shown we can, we can race, race through the field uh, and, and get good points. And normally from outside the top 10 into the top six. So we have a fast race car. The key question is getting everything optimized in a whole weekend uh, and hopefully delivering result we believe we're capable of. And uh, finally, the, the Jaguar I-Pace e-trophy is here again in Hong Kong. Two races down this season. What do you make of it so far? Very tight at the top of that championship in particular. Yeah, I think from, from my perspective and from our perspective of Jaguar, it's uh, immediately settled into being a really great you know, key support, uh, lead support championship for Formula E. Um, incredibly close racing, incredibly, you know, close competition with great, great, great drivers, you know. So, you know, what we have seen is some new talent emerging um, and, you know, fantastic also to, to kind of achieve some key milestones. You know, the first female winner at a Formula E weekend with Catherine in, uh, in Mexico, Simon Evans coming out of racing domestically in New Zealand and, and winning the opening race amongst some amazing co competition. So, uh, yeah, level of professional is very high. Uh, the racing has been incredibly exciting. So we're very positive. And, uh, yeah, I think it's very much already settling into being a, being a great addition to the championship. Uh, we've just had a question through from a fan watching on YouTube. Uh, can you tell us about attack mode on this circuit and uh, in the wet and how it might be different to, to previous races? Yeah, I think um, what we have seen with attack mode, I would say maybe over the first, the, the first few races, is it really kind of the ability for you to use it to attack and defend has produced great racing from the start of the race to the end. And I think there's a, there's a big discussion around would we have an issue on... Um, on uh, would it work ultimately in terms of creating good racing? And it's done a fantastic job. And I think we're unanimous in the view on that. It has actually meant we don't have a, a key moment just before a pit stop and just after. Actually, it creates racing throughout the race. In some cases, you have to really kind of go offline. And Mexico is a bit different to what we'd seen elsewhere. You know, Udesu didn't have the time loss. 
but where it was induced errors, and you saw that with Roland and the Nissan and, and some others. Um, will the wet conditions change things? I think, to be honest, it's really hard to know. We haven't run on the circuit in the, in the wet yet, how, what the surface is going to be like for grip. Um, so if it induces a lot of error, that could, that could create some challenges like we saw in Mexico. So I think until we are, have a chance to run in, in damp conditions, maybe today by the looks of things, um, then we'll, we'll get, a, get a view on how that potentially could affect things. But no doubt the concept seems to be working really well.